So we're gonna start today's video with a little bit of a story time. Back in 2018, I was on the road with my band, Noah Guthrie and Good Trouble, and we were rolling into St. Augustine, Florida for a show the next day, so we had the night off. Now, one of my childhood best friends, Bill, lives down in St. Augustine, so Bill and I went out for a night on the town, and as is typical of nights on the town, I got a little drunk, okay? It happens, sue me. Now, unbeknownst to me, the rest of the band who had stayed back at the hotel were also going pretty hard in the paint. It was a long travel day. We were trying to unwind and have a good time. So when I got back to the hotel, it was a pretty uh, lively evening, we'll say. Now, on the TV that night happened to be the CMAs, the 2018 CMA Awards. Now, if you're not familiar, the CMAs are sort of like Nashville's version of the Grammys. It's a yearly awards show where the industry basically rewards Nashville's best and brightest, typically in the sort of, you know, commercial country, bro country space. But about halfway through the show, uh, the announcer brings up Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder. And the performance that we witnessed that night, I will never forget. Seriously, I will I will remember the, this moment as long as I live, sitting in this hotel room in St. Augustine, Florida, because uh, that was the night that I discovered one of my favorite guitar players. So that was Jake Workman. Now, I discovered Jake Workman that night, and I've been following him ever since. He is, without a doubt, one of my favorite guitar players alive today. Uh, he's one of the best flat picker, bluegrass style guitar players out there. I mean, it's it's just insane. And you have to remember the context of this. The entire night we had been watching, you know, a uh, uh, polished sort of commercialized uh, bros singing about beer and pickup trucks and tailgate and moonlight and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden this comes on. I mean, it was unbelievable. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at Jake Workman and his playing and what makes him such an unbelievable guitar player. Now, as always with these videos, I like to shout out the players that we are featuring. So go follow Jake. I've got his uh, Instagram linked down below, a link to his website. He put out a uh, an amazing solo record in 2019. It's Fantastic. Also, uh, I'll have links to Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder stuff if you want to catch Jake live. He, he's been playing with Ricky Skaggs since about 2015, uh, and they are out traveling and playing shows. I would highly recommend you go catch them live. While you're down there, don't forget to check out some of my video courses. We got a brand new mini course on the way. It is the Bare Bones Guitar Theory course. That course is an hour long. It's designed for people who uh, have some holes in their knowledge of music theory for guitar, whether you're a complete beginner, you've been playing for years, and you want to get the basics, the bare bones of guitar theory down and under your hands. You can check that out down below. So yeah, let's take a look at Jake's playing. Dude, that is, it's so fast. I, 
I don't I don't understand how they're doing that. So that's Jake Workman and Trey Hensley. Trey Hensley on the right, who is also an incredible flat picker, incredible bluegrass musician. You should absolutely go follow uh, Trey Hensley as well. I'll have his stuff linked down below. Flat picking guitar. The name flat picking comes from the fact that you're using a flat pick, right? A typical sort of guitar plectrum, if you will. But it's not just that, right? Flat picking as a style in terms of bluegrass guitar came about in the mid to late 1950s with guitarists like Doc Watson. And it was sort of a, a solution to a problem. The story goes that Doc Watson was touring uh, in a band playing square dances and they didn't have a fiddle player. So Doc Watson stepped up and started playing the lead lines and the heads to these traditional bluegrass and folk songs on his guitar, which up until that point, most of the time the guitar was seen primarily as a rhythm instrument, not necessarily a lead instrument. Those roles in that ensemble was reserved more for mandolin, banjo, and fiddle. Now, around that time, there were other players like Tony Rice, Norman Blake, who were all stepping up and kind of doing a similar thing. They were stepping the guitar forward into more of a lead role rather than just a rhythm role. And that's where the term flat picking comes from, where you're playing melodically, you're playing the, the head or the melody to a song, or you're improvising a solo over a rhythm section. And it was people like Doc Watson and Norman Blake and, and all these amazing players of the 50s and 60s and 70s that sort of pioneered the sound. And then nowadays we have Jake Workman, Trey Hensley, Andy Wood, a lot of these amazing players that are sort of carrying the torch on in the flat picking style. So the thing I love about this clip is you can really tell how important your sense of rhythm and your sense of time feel is to this music. It's just the two of them playing and they're playing at an insane tempo, but that's not necessarily what's important here. The two guitars are essentially just filling the role of the entire ensemble. And you can kind of hear that while they're trading solos back and forth, whoever ends up playing rhythm is filling the role of the the drummer, the bass player, and the rhythm player all in one. And that's coming down to their right hand and their time feel. I mean, listen to how in the pocket this is with both of these guys, even though it's at such an insane tempo. So in that clip, Jake was playing rhythm. And if you watch him and listen to him, he's not just playing the chords. If you watch the low string, the low E string and A string, he's actually also sort of comping the bass line as well. So you can tell that these guys are trying to fill the gaps of the players that aren't there. And it's not just about what notes he's playing and the rhythm he's playing in the right hand. It's about where he's playing on the guitar, either closer to the bridge or closer to the sound hole to get a different sort of timbre and, and texture out of the guitar. And you can almost hear the rest of the ensemble, what would be happening just based off of what Jake and Trey are playing. You can hear the walking bass line, you can hear the train beat underneath it. I mean, it's so impressive. Okay, so the thing I love about this clip is not just the fact that it's a little bit slower and it's a little bit closer to mortal human uh, levels of ability of playing, but this clip that he played at Carter Vintage, I think really highlights Jake's right hand and the control and the accuracy and the level of dynamic control he's got in his picking hand. Now that is a huge part of flat picking, right? Making the each note that you pick is consistent, sounds the same, has the same level intensity, the same uh, timbre, the same tone. 
And this, I think, really, really highlights that super well. The other cool thing is you can watch how easily he switches from playing these super intricate lines where he's alternate picking. Every single note has the same level of intensity, the same sound, the same tone. It's incredibly consistent, incredibly clean and clear, which is very difficult to do. But then how easily he switches from single note lines to really, really beautiful in the pocket rhythm playing in his right hand. I mean, check, check this out. If we back up a little bit here. Also the way that he's approaching these chords in the right hand, like you can tell that he's picking the lower strings a little bit closer to the sound hole and the higher strings where he's getting most of his chordal information for is a little bit closer to the bridge, which is making it sound brighter, right? So he's getting this kind of like. The other thing is the difference in picking dynamic between the low bass string and the higher sort of chordal strings, if you will. Like he's really digging in to that low bass string and then sort of lightening up his touch on the rest of the downstroke so that he's not overpowering these, these upper strings, right? The... It's, it's so difficult to do like he does. And that's what's cool about doing this on an acoustic guitar is you, there's nothing else happening. There's no amp, there's no pedals, there's no effects. It's literally just him his left hand on the fingerboard, his right hand holding the pick and the guitar. Yet there's such a wide range of sound and tone and, and dynamics that he's able to pull out of the guitar. The other thing that's great is you can see how relaxed his right hand is. And this is something I used to tell students all the time when I was teaching guitar lessons, especially beginner students who were trying to learn uh, acoustic rhythm and acoustic technique. You can tell his right hand and his right wrist is super relaxed. And if you watch, his motion is almost more like he's shaking water off his hands. Like, you know, you just wash your hands in the sink and you're, you know, you do this kind of thing. That's how I used to tell my students to do it. And that's a perfect example is like, you keep your wrist loose and the motion is not here. It's not in the elbow. It's more so in the wrist. And that's where he's getting that level of dynamic control, that tonal choice he has between the strings and where he's picking down low versus up high. So he's making those choices in real time as he's playing uh, these songs, as he's moving between lead lines and rhythm playing, as he's developing sort of the overall dynamic feel and dynamic flow of a song when it's just him playing. It's truly incredible. I mean, what what is there to say about that? It has the qualities of like shredding, but to me, this has the added layer of complexity of there's no amp there. He's not playing with a ton of gain. There's not a ton of natural compression coming from the amplifier. He's not playing legato licks. Every single note is picked on a dreadnought acoustic guitar at an insane tempo. And it's it's all there. Every single note sounds clear and punchy and beautiful. And it's just him and the guitar. I mean, that's some of the most impressive guitar playing I've ever seen. Uh, and it's a testament to guys like Jake and Trey Hensley and, and all the other flat picking guitar players that have come before these guys uh, that deserve a ton of recognition. Bluegrass is not something I talk about a lot on this channel, although I love it. I'm, I genuinely love bluegrass music. I love the bluegrass and the folk tradition especially coming from the southeastern portion of the United States. It, it's a big part of how I grew up and, and things that I grew up listening to. I just can't do this. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried so many times to learn this, this flat picking style, this super accurate thing, and it's just not in me. That's just not my style of guitar playing. But I mean, hats off 
to Jake Workman. He is, uh, he's hands down one of my favorite guitar players alive today. Um, this clip is on Jake's YouTube channel. He's on YouTube. You can uh, check that out linked down below. You should absolutely go subscribe. He also teaches lessons. He teaches Skype lessons when he's not on the road. So if you, like me, are curious about this guitar style and you wanna start picking it up yourself, uh, maybe send him an email, hit him up, see if he's got any availability. As I said before, I'll have all his links and everything down below. Please go show him some support, man. I mean, he uh, he deserves it. And if you can check out Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder when they're on the road anywhere near you, I would highly, highly recommend it because I've never seen them live, not yet, but it looks like an incredible time. Also, don't forget to subscribe and check out the playlist of these other videos in the series linked down below as well. My name is Rhett Scholl. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, there is no plan B.